Saturday afternoon now. Dub Club have uh, an event on at Coffee and a Machine this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. So I'm going over there this afternoon, see a few people, see a few cars. So I'm going to chuck a couple of clips in here. And that's going to be added into my weekly shenanigan video that I'm doing at the end of the week. So there you go. This is Nathan's Beetle and uh, it's static. And uh, he was just driving it to Cafe in the Machine and he's snapped the dog bone mount and the engine dropped on the floor and he smashed the sump so it's literally dumped there. That's static, he literally just subframe raised it and everything. <laughs> it looks so good this car. We're literally like five minutes away. Poor bloke. Looks sick though. Sunday afternoon, put a new set of drop links on the BB because, well, it was making a bit of noise. I'll show you the last set. Yeah, that was uh, that was all that was left of those. There's literally nothing left of them. They're all cracked to high heavens. Fun fact, this car is a Toyota Yaris chassis, so pretty much everything Toyota Yaris mechanically fits onto here. So there you go. You might be wondering, why is that car still here? It's been there for ages. And there's no other option apart from it simply does not want to leave me. I've had to change. And those are tiny little gremlins and chase little things and noises and just one of them cars that just never wants to leave, but we're pretty much finished with this now. Just pulled up home. This is playing up. Also, this just sits on my driveway. No MOT, no exhaust, needs rear quarters, uh, needs rear bushes, all of that. It just sits there. So if anyone's wondering where that is, I refuse to sell it because it's so cool and rare. However, it does need a lot of work. <sighs> Maybe the end of the year. I'll start on that. Just finishing the last panel on the Datsun engine bay. I ran out of gas last time, so this has been unfinished for a couple of days now. So just gonna zip this together, cut these engine mounts off the subframe, get all the suspension back in so this car's rolling and then get it ready to get it back on the ramp and put the rotary in and make the engine mounts. Uh, yeah. Finished off that one and now going straight on to the AMI now. This car's been here a while, and I know it's been here a while because, well, I've been pushing it around. Now, it ended up being a lot more work than we initially planned, so I had to get a bunch of custom parts made for it, and to be honest, it's just taken ages. Everything has just taken ages. I've been busy with other stuff, it's just not really aligned, but today it's on the ramp. 
and we're going to start doing some more work on it because I want to get this done. It's going to be really, really, really exciting. I'm really excited. I don't know if I said that, but I'm really excited. These are drop plates for the Amin. So these bolt onto the rear arm with these four bolts, and then you bolt the hub this much higher, so 85 mil higher, and then that way the wheel goes up without affecting the suspension travel. Because if you remember, the Ami axle goes all the way forward. So now on full height, it's actually gonna go backwards, and that's the sacrifice we had. Do you want it to look good when it's aired out or aired up? That's the only way that this car will be on the floor, so. We went for aired up, wheel goes slightly further back. So when it airs out now, the wheel will be like center in the arch. So that was the compromise that we had. Now this car is really hard to film purely because it's all custom and I'm literally figuring it out as I'm doing it. It's a lot of brain power. It's literally taking all the brain power out of me. So you have to bear with me. It won't be me filming many clips. It will be just be showing you what's going on. And then at the end of it, I could do like a summary video, but you'll get clips and stuff for this car. It's just so hard to film being the project that it is. If I had someone else with me, great, but it just takes a lot. It just takes a lot on this car, so bear with me. This is the drop plate. So this is obviously the hub. This is obviously raised up there, which is what this car is for. And then here is a ABS ring and it doesn't actually fit. There's like a two mil gap, basically, when the bolt, if the bolt was out, it would fit. Uh, when that's all the way down, and literally the head of the bolt protrudes. So you probably, I need to take like two mil off of this edge just here, just to clear the bolt, but it will fit. And uh, yeah, this basically goes on here like that. There's on there like that. And then this bolts to the control arm. And then obviously the wheel hub has been pushed up 85 mil and it drops the back of the car down without affecting suspension. So that's how that works. Uh, I think I've got some bolts for here. If not, I'm gonna be quite upset. But yeah, that's what's happening. Putting these on, getting a measure up, hopefully narrowing the rear end with these because obviously our wheels didn't fit the car anyway. So that's why we got these. These are 20 mil thick, 85 mil drop and these accept uh, M12 cap heads. So these will go through and then you're not unbolt them through the end. You've got no bolts protruding. And yeah, expensive bit of kit, but here we are. There you go, bolts in the bottom there. Now these are M10 bolts for mock-up purposes. I've got to put M12 in there. Uh, just don't have any M12s. Uh, they obviously nut and bolt through the back and then the hub will literally bolt straight onto there. The hub and ABS ring might even fit with the thickness of the backing plate, so I might be millimetre perfect. I'm not sure yet, I haven't tried, but yeah. Now we've done this, we are narrowing the arms, but I need to mock up and have a look and see if things are gonna fit properly. Uh, this is this is a very tight tolerance machine. <laughs> but yeah, I'll come back to you. You're not going to be able to see that, but you can just see the bolt there. It's literally like, oh, you can nearly see a gap through it. It's like literally half a millimetre. So I'll just take like half a millimetre off one of those materials and it's literally millimetre perfect. But there you go. I've got to put these two bolts in here. That bolts onto there, then that bolts into there. And it's threaded on the hub. So the bolts are in there. I'll just put the other two bolts in. Get it all together. I've uh, brought this arm in on that mount there. So basically what I'm planning on doing is when I've got the wheel on, everything's up in the air. I'm gonna make the arm, I'll make a jig, sort of bolt the arm to like the bench or something. And then we're gonna move this bush to here, but then keep this part of the arm here and just sort of like diagonally go across. So we narrow the track width. Uh, and then obviously push it back out with this drop plate, because this is 20 mil. We'll be lowering that. We're narrowing it like 50 mil, then pushing out 20 mil. So technically we're only like narrowing it an inch and a half. So, or an inch. So yeah, it sort of balances itself out, but it's a very jiggery pokery situation. And that's all just to get the wheel to sit in the middle of the arch. But you get the gist. It even shows you where the center of the arch is. So that's good, isn't it? There you go. That fits in there. 
the recessed uh, washers are in there. We could add a little bit of camber to the back of this if we wanted to, but we'll see what happens. I'm just playing at the minute. This is uh, scary. Right, so that's all fitted up now. Drop plates in, wheels narrowed, wheel is underneath the arch. Uh, it's got a five mil spacer on, and if we put a 10 mil, I think the arch will just fold away and it'll be absolutely fine. Um, but it's pretty much aired out now. If we had a five mil spacer, it would not be touching the chassis just there. Uh, and then it would go like another 10 mil lower or so. But from now, I'm gonna make a jig to mount these arms on and narrow them. Uh, we have to notch the arm here where this little frame is. Just a little notch on there. Uh, and then obviously just make sure everything's all straight, get it all on. And then we can use a narrowed arm with a factory mounting position on the chassis so you don't have to cut any of the chassis. And then from there, we'll have to figure out a shock mounting point on here to go up here. Obviously the shock mount is over here, but we sort of need it here. So yeah, there's lots of, uh, things to be trimmed and realigned, but we're getting somewhere. The drop plates fit, so that's the first hurdle sorted. Bottom of the tire, spirit level, imitating the road. We have a gap there, which is like less than an inch off the floor. Now, obviously the chassis on the rear will allow it, but we gotta think about the front as well. As you remember, or if you not remember, the chassis hangs about that much off the front of the chassis. So yeah, we'll be sat on this bolt just here. So that gap at the back for the sill is perfect. And that means we have a baseline of where to start because we know exactly how low the car's gonna be. We know where the wheel's gonna sit, etc., etc. Look at that. Just notch that arm quickly to give us the clearance and you can see that it does just touch the arch. That's fine but that's how low the car will be anyway, so we don't have to worry about the inner structure uh, rubbing and stuff. The problem we have is literally the rubbing at the front end, so we're good, we are good. Now I've figured out the distance between here and here, I can now move the jig over to here and then weld this center plate that we've made here and put it onto the bench because currently it's hanging off. I could have measured this on the car, you're thinking, but uh, basically, the wheel arch is like here, the body's like here. I, there's no way to measure this in the car. So I had to just figure it out here while I can actually get around it, get tape measure on it. Cause you literally kind of, I kind of get my finger in here when I'm putting it on the car. So yeah, that's why this is happening. This will be probably really hard to understand, but just trust me or don't, just don't trust me. Right, jigs moved over, all braced up, spaced out. So this is the two inches of narrowing. I'm able to measure this quite a lot. So the distance between here and here is exactly the same distance as here to here. Now I've braced it all up. It looks rough, but you don't want to seam weld it to the bench. You want it to be able to be removed. So you have to make it strong enough to be, you know, held tight and nothing moves. So I can move the whole bench with this. This is proper solid. But you also want to make it so you can remove it from the bench and not grind for ages. So that's like that. Um, it looks rough, but it does the job. And now I've got to basically get this eyelet off here. So I'm basically going to just cut it here, move that into here, and then we're going to go that way and make a little brace that goes into there and integrate it some way. I might use this. 20 by 50 box section, because it's basically, look, it's the same height as it, and it's a lot longer than, oh, this stuff here, this stuff is so thin, that I could literally move it with my hands, and the whole control arm's made with that, so cut that off there. But that's almost perfect for what we need. I'll make sure that we've got enough clearance for the wheel, so I wanna basically cut it as far back as I can, but also not too close to the bushes and weld them and melt all the bushes. If we do melt the bushes, it's fine. It's a control arm for a, I mean, it's not like a rocket science million pound bush. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is how it looks. I'm gonna just catch up with you afterwards because there's a lot of measuring and grinding and welding and it's just not gonna be easy to film. So catch you in a minute. There you 
we go. So that was obviously there. And obviously we've got this bit here. I am gonna get this 50 by 50, uh, 20 by 50 box, and that's gonna fit in that hole just. And then go something like that. There you go, that's recessed into there. So that slots inside, goes in, and then it obviously goes in there like that. And then that is how we'll do that. That's obviously still chassis mounted. That's all the way in. And then we'll do a gusset all the way around. And that'll be 10 times stronger than what this is. When you're doing stuff like this, uh, if you've done anything like this before, you will know if you're cutting this up, you want to make it overly strong just out of uh, just fear. Not fear, but like just in case. And this arm is so bad and there's been like signs of these cracking and stuff like that down here so i'm gonna reinforce it anyway but it will be 10 times stronger than what's on there and then also this car literally weighs nothing so it doesn't have to be as strong as it is but we're literally just going crazy for this car i guess but yeah that's what's happening a lot nicer welding on this one than the factory <laughs> Some of the worlds in this car make me laugh, but there we go, one arm done. So my van, horrible thing, snapped an aux belt on the way back from Dub Club at the start of this video. And I, it was like half 11 at night and I had to drive it home with no, no wipers on or anything and it was chucking it down and I want to get it started. Ah. Got to fix that today. And as well as fixing this van, I've got to fix that because I've got to put a new pressure sensor in the tank and the uh, drop links I've fitted in the start of this video I started rattling already in two days. So not happy. Lack of belt. I'm not sure how it works on this one. Is that tensioner? Don't know how it works. The tension doesn't actually look too happy. I don't know, I'll figure it out. Of course, it's never an easy job. The tensioner has uh, seized up and that's why the belt snapped, which is, well, obvious, which probably means he wants a cam belt at the same time. Um, yeah, fun, wicked, can't fix this today. New pressure sensor in, straighten the steering wheel, nipped the drop links up and they were, they were tight, but I just nipped them up a little bit more. Can't see any other knocks or anything bangs. I'm pretty sure it is the uh, drop links that are knocking. They're not, it's only on big bumps that I've noticed it, but I don't know. I think the drop links were just not very good quality. The rubber on the drop links was a little bit harder than the other ones. Uh, obviously the other ones were destroyed, but these ones are like aftermarket, so maybe they're just rubbish quality. They're more like plastic as opposed to rubber. It actually fixed the noise and I can't hear anything, so that was a success. That is a pair. Factory narrowed. Now it's not finished, I need to gusset it and pretty it up and make it sort of not noticeable. But the main thing I wanted was clearance to the wheel there, which we've done, which is perfect. Now I have to get this strut in and mounted somehow. I don't really know how I'm gonna do it, to be honest, because there's a lot of wires here, but probably gonna come off the bottom of this frame here. And uh, yeah, make a little subframe out of it. I don't know. It's uh, tricky, but we'll figure it out. That car has caused me grief today. Now I'm getting some steel for the Ami. Some random bit of length here. I think this might be good. That'll do. Mount the shocks off. What happened to this BB was I put those new drop links in and then literally straight after it started rattling I thought those drop links have already broken because I wasn't too sold on them. So I drove it and the more I drove it, uh, the more it got rattlier. So that's pretty weird. Why is that? 
I looked through it and I went and bought some new drop links here. As you can see, I've not opened them. And before I went to put them on, I decided to, you know, check the top mount and the top mount had loosened itself off at exactly the same time as I changed the drop links. So obviously I hadn't had the strut out or anything like that just to change the drop links. But that happened and that took up a load of my time. And then I went to the metal shop today and none of them had the metal that I needed, so I've had to order it. So we just had a pretty rubbish day, but we did get some stuff done. I'm gonna go home now, get the orders sorted that people have been waiting for. I do appreciate everyone that has ordered from me. Um, I'm gonna go do that this evening, get those out because I've been waiting for a restock of some stuff. So yeah, I've got some of it and some of it can go out. One man band here. Couple of orders going down. Sewing machines right here. Get it all situated. Get yourself a ticket. Gresswells.com. Click on the store. Click on here. And then there's me, the big man. Sierra giveaway. There you go. There's your Sierra giveaway. Here it be. That's how you do it. Link in the description. My restock of stickers and banners will be available next week fingers crossed should be that's what i'm told anyway so anyone that's waiting for a banner i know there's a couple of you thank you for your patience and the hoodies as well i've done one there's two sewn over there to be thrown in some bags i'll sort it out thank you <laughs> As you can see there, just a quick Monday morning seal repair that ended up being a massive repair. Thought it was only this big and I had to do like the whole size. Fun. They come here, these useless cunts. Look at me, all this stuff here. Especially that useless cunt. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm going to work at five o'clock. Card or cash there? Card, please. As you've heard, back to the workshop. Now I'm going to do this little job for my little friend Matt. These arms are to be extended for his skyline that we did. Put a picture in here. And uh, yeah, these are brand new arms he's given me. And these are some S13 donors that I have here. So I'm going to extend these ones with this little offcut here. And then I'll have the same shape to go around it. Then I will have done two sets of arms with this spare pair of arms that I had. Those were mine, but... Easier to just come up because I had no use for them anyway. I also got this parcel. This is for the army. Ooh, smells good. Oh, one of them. This right here is the army top mount, right? However, we got some socks. Cheers, right now. Uh, more air fresheners. Cool. This bit here, obviously, is an adjustable one. And that goes on there. Like that. So this goes onto the top mount. This goes up into the chassis of the army. these so that goes there like that and then lifts the whole top mount up that's three inches we might have to trim it down a bit i'm not sure and obviously we have that as well for raising the strut top of the ami with this like a bolt on strut top raise because the strut top goes into the dash um and i can do this tomorrow now i've got it
thanks to Jack. And drop works for that. I appreciate that. And thanks for Lowdown for packing out the parcel. That was nice of you. What I'm going to do is obviously cut the 20 mil off the end of there and then cut that one straight there. Put that in the middle of these two. Easy way to do it is to make sure you cut it straight is to measure from the edge of that hole and then measure from the edge of that hole to your line. And that way you know your line is straight and not like this, like this. Because these arms are like tapered and they move a bit. So we cut straight here, don't worry. The video is all over the place. However, uh, it's like this most weeks, but you don't see that behind the camera. So there you go. Hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> Close enough. Inside welded up. I'm gonna let that cool down, then do that one because I don't want to burn the bushes. There's not really any heat around here. I mean, it's warm, but it's not hot. If I carried on welding this one, it would boil all of the grease in here and it would ruin the ball joint. So do a little bit and then move on to there and then move back to it and we should be golden. Oh. How good is this can of paint? Full coverage. Unbelievable. I always moan at the car shop about paint, and this is like the best paint I've ever had. Unbelievable. Big fan. You join me in the morning. Just wash the BB. These wheels come out lovely. Look at that. All the barrels are painted, powder coated and whatnot. It looks so good, this car. This car's going this evening, so I've got to pick him up from the train station. And, uh, yeah, there's one car finally going, even though it didn't want to leave me. But it's going. Now I've got to fix my van. Got a new tension there. Fix this in the rain, it looks like. Great. Because uh, it's dead and I can't move it. Literally seconds after, it couldn't be any windier and rainier. For God's sake. There's hail and everything. I am not running out in that right now. It's literally a river down there. Soaked. It's on. I'm soaked and upset. I want to go home. So this is the Ami top mount, which I might have to do some modifications to because, well, I don't think it fits. <laughs> I do need to cut this back edge off and make it fit, but yeah, it's very tight and I'm not sold on what we've done here. I might need to scallop out here for the bag because it's like this far away, both sides. And I feel like it might be a bit too tight. I don't know. This is a very much a work in progress. It's hard to measure any of it. It's sort of like try it in, try it out, try it in, try it out. Uh, it's in there, but at what expense? I've had to absolutely hack it to pieces. So it's actually a lot tighter than I imagined. There's a bit of the plastic along the top of the dash that sits here. That bit of plastic there, just here. That is exactly where the windscreen is. So I was going to cut that and I nearly, I started dremeling it. I was like, that's really thick. Uh, and that actually turns out to be the windscreen. So I've had to trim that edge here. As you can see, it's not straight, but there is a void. So we're just going to basically trim that so it can go right underneath it because that is all the gap that's always going to be there. There's never going to be any more gap than that. But as you can see, the bag is very close to the side of here, which is why if we take this back off. There's a little circle there. And that is obviously loads bigger than that. And this actually fits in here with about two or three mil to spare. So, put that in uh, and that's as deep as we actually need it for that little plastic bit and then uh, basically 
putting this on here like that and that's going to get recessed down and then obviously we get to trim that edge there exactly where the bag is uh, and then we just hope that it works because otherwise well i don't know what to do <laughs> because this truck will be useless for us and i'd have wasted some money again a lot of stuff done for the front after much modification it is in and it is tight as well so tight that it will hold itself there <laughs> well i shall weld it all together now there's a lot of welding on this a ton to be exact it's very very hot <laughs> it is so tight but now it's still warm, it actually doesn't fit in there, even though all I've done is weld it together. <laughs> oh no. Watch what happens if you hit near the strut tower with a hammer. Ready? <laughs> and that brings us to Thursday night. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to go collect Tom from the train station now, the gentleman that owns this car. And uh, yeah, this video is already fairly long as I was editing it just before we turned up. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. That's an insight to my week. Everything is manic this week. Next week might be the same. If you like this style of video, let me know because all sorts of stuff happens at the same time. And uh, I just thought I'd do a video of what everything happens in one week because uh, it's pretty manic these days. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. The tickets are still live on the Sierra. Go grab some of those. Uh, we're waiting for a new clutch plate and I can carry on with that again. Uh, and then number two, if you go to Crestworld's Instagram, the meet that I'm hosting, uh, I'll put it up on the screen now. That is live and I post it on my Instagram so there's more details over there. But I'll talk about it in another episode because... This episode is already really long, so yeah. Thanks anyway. Goodbye.